Hi everyone, welcome to another Lightroom tutorial. My name is Craig Anderson from CraigAndersonPhotography.com and today's tutorial I'm just going to take you through a recent photograph that I took and just the processing that I went through to uh, get it to a photograph that I liked. What I must stress in the beginning of these tutorials is there is no set formula for developing the photo. The photograph that I'm developing is to my taste. If you don't like my taste then that is perfectly okay uh, but the tutorial that I'm going to show you today is obviously developing the photo to the way that I like it. So let's start off by having a look at this photograph. This photograph is an early morning sunrise shot. It was shot with a Lee filter, the 10 stop big stopper. Um, so you can see quite nicely I managed to, to extend the shutter speed or the shutter time down to 30 seconds. So I've got some very nice uh, flat ocean and a bit of mist coming over the rocks here, uh, which is, is the effect I was after. Even up in the sky you can see the clouds. Uh, we've got the nice streaking of the clouds in the sky. So let's have a look at, at how I'd go through developing this photograph. So the first thing that I would do is uh, close up the, the panel on the right hand side here and go down to lens correction. Uh, I do know I have my profile of my lens uh, that's come across with this photograph so I can go through to the enable profile correction and as you can see there it's um, I was shooting with a rather wide angled lens and it's, it's just corrected some perspective for me. I will also apply some removal of chromatic aberration. Uh, I don't think there's too much of that in this photograph but it's probably best to go through that anyway. Um, so that's the lens correction done. The next thing I'm going to have a look at is the actual composition and whether I have horizons that are straight whether there's anything on the edges that I should get rid of uh, with a bit of cropping. So we're going to the crop tool. So I'm going to just uh, click the crop tool over there on the right hand side. And you'll see the crop uh, overlay comes up. And I'm going to go down to the angle tool. And because I've got a very flat horizon, it'll be obvious if this horizon is not straight. So the first thing I'm going to do is click and drag right across until I'm happy with uh, having a straight horizon and then there we go and it's slightly corrected it for me there which is perfect what I was looking for. Uh, some other things that that I would probably get rid of in this photograph mainly on the left hand side here is that little rock over there could be a little bit annoying so I'll just drag it in slightly now I really like the sky in this, so I'll move it so that we've got the full sky showing. I will go through now and uh, I will apply that. Let me just close that up and it's all applied. So yep, that's got the composition that I'm looking for. The horizon is straight. So now let's start going through whatever else I want to go through. So you'll notice because this is a early morning photograph, the sun has come up, there's clearly a difference between the brightness of the sky and the dark shadows down here in the foreground. I was shooting towards the east when the sun was rising, so that's why you can see over here all these rocks are in shadow and are pretty dark. Now I don't shoot with a radiant neutral density filter because I think Lightroom does a pretty good job of doing that post-processing. So let's see what we can do with it at this moment in time. So the first thing that I'm going to go do is go and grab my gradient filter. You see already I've got a minus one uh, exposure, so dropping it down one stop of exposure. And I will actually go probably to about here, pull it down, make sure I get it straight.
that. It's not completely straight, but I can just move it over there. So now I've got a very nice contrast in the sky. Uh, you can see I'm starting to pull out some of the sort of detail over here. But what I might also do, given that I've got some nice color coming up in those clouds over there, is I might just go help that color along a bit. So I'm going to drag the temperature slightly to the right. Let's give it about a 15, no, 14, that will do. And that gives me some nice color in the sky. I might also give it a bit of a tint. No, eight is probably too much. I'll bring it back down. Oops. I'll bring that down to a five. So now I've got a really cool looking sky. What you'll notice though is that has brought down the whole exposure of my photograph and if you go to the right hand side here and have a look at the histogram you'll see clearly uh, there is a lot more of this photograph sitting in the uh, left hand side of my histogram which means it is sitting in the darker side of my histogram than sitting in the lighter side of my histogram. So let's start going through other things that I would do for this photograph. I'm going to warm up the photograph slightly find that with the uh, filter that I used it does cool down the photograph in other words make it slightly bluer than it, than it normally would be so uh, I think I'm going to try a 6150 which makes it slightly warmer and the tint I think is fine sitting at a minus five but I'm also going to slightly increase the exposure probably just by a point one that brings it up nicely. I also enjoy my photographs to be quite contrasty so I'm going to increase my contrast up by 10. Now I'm just typing those numbers in on the keyboard but you can use your mouse and drag the slider each way. Um, I just find it sometimes if you know kind of the area that you want to be in you can just type it in, it makes it go a little bit faster. Now let's move down to the highlight shadows, whites and blacks. And this is really where you can start to make quite a big impact on your photograph. Uh, you'll notice each one of these, when I go over the slider, if you look up at the histogram here, you will see ranges of uh, the histogram that light up slightly and they all correspond down to areas down here so the highlights slider we really are playing down here and you can see from this histogram that I've got quite a few highlights that are peaking and I can guarantee you that those highlights are sitting around here and so what I'm going to do is I want to bring out some of the detail now I haven't gone right to the right hand side so I haven't lost detail there it's just quite spiked so if I drag this down, bring it down to sort of 90, you'll notice there's a significant difference. Uh, if I show you again, that's what it was before I've done all my adjustments. That is what it's looking like now. A lot more detail sitting in the sky, which I'm quite happy about. That again, the overall feel of this, again, if you look at the uh, histogram, the overall feel of this photograph is that it's now pulled down slightly to the darker side. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to pull down my shadows a little bit. And that's getting the overall feel that I'm looking for, which is quite dark. It was an early morning shoot, so it's looking quite good. But you can see I've got a gap here between where my whites are ending up and how far I could actually push them to the edge of the histogram. So I'm going to take my whites up slightly, move them towards the edge. I'll probably do it that way. And I'm going to push my blacks also slightly up. Right over there. 
moving on further down to the clarity, vibrance and saturation. Um, again, clarity really is contrast in the mid-levels. So what it's looking for is areas of contrast throughout the mid-levels of your photograph rather than the uh, edges and it's going to define those so you can push it right up. I like to take my clarity up to about 30. It's a little bit hard when you doing it with your mouse so you can just type it in and that is giving me some nice clarity sitting in there pulls out the details in the rocks particularly um, probably not so much in the sky but definitely in the rocks gives me a lot nicer uh, contrast in those those rocks but I also want to boost the uh, boost the colors of this photograph because you know it's my style I do like a there's a lot of nice green sitting in here which we need to pull out and you know try to pull out a bit of the blue that's sitting around there so we can uh, push our vibrance up and we can push our vibrance quite high let's push it to about 41 41 will do so again that's starting to pull out the nice greeny colors coming out of the ocean over here and i'm also going to push my saturation up slightly So again, you're starting to see a beautiful sunrise hitting the clouds at the top. And I'm starting to pull out the green in the ocean. Now this is actually a rock pool. Um, and so you can see the rocks quite near the surface. It's also, over here, I'm pulling out the colors of the, the moss that's growing on the rocks. So all in all, I'm starting to get a nice, nice photograph. So let's move down. Once we've started doing all those, the next area I'm going to work on is detail. Now the two areas I like to work on in my detail, and if you have a look over here, it gives you a close-up. So it's a 100% zoom of an area within, and I can move that area around depending on what I want to see. It's no good having it that dark, but I can pull it so that it's over here. And so I can see there's a bit of graininess, but I want to increase my sharpening. and I increase all my sharpening of my photos up to around about 75 again just makes it look more in focus um, and pulls out the detail uh, in, in the rocks and, and anything that has a contrast but at the same time I'm also not a fan of having grainy oceans um, when those surfaces should be pretty nice and smooth so I'm going to increase my noise reduction and I find a noise reduction around about 30 generally makes it a lot smoother sitting over here without losing detail and sharpness in the photograph. Moving on down, I've already done my lens correction. The last thing I like to do is darken the edges and, and, and this is a personal preference. Uh, I know there are a lot of people who are not a fan of darkening the edges, uh, but I like to use a bit of um, darkening of those edges, a bit of vignetting, uh, not a whole much, a whole lot. So if I just drag this, now if I drag it up it makes it white, but if you drag it down it makes it black. And I like to sit somewhere around the 15. Again it's given my sky quite a bit of, uh, quite a bit of uh, detail and then the colors come back out. Now having a look at this overall photograph again, I'm not happy with the amount of exposure, so I'm going to go back up and I'm just going to increase my exposure until I'm until I'm actually where we are sitting over there. So increase my exposure to 0.25. You'll notice the whole histogram moving slightly to the right. I'm not concerned that my histogram is sitting to the left. I don't feel you need to get it perfectly in the center. The mood of the photograph is what I'm trying to capture here and it is a bit of a dark gloomy stormy mood uh, and so I'm quite happy with it sitting down there. So let's have a look. If I use the backslash key that is the original photograph how it came out of my camera and this is what it looks like now. So quite a significant difference coming out of it but this is how I had it envisaged in my mind when I took the photograph. This is more like what I saw, um, so I think this is quite a good 